So it's one of the major specialities of the QBank 2.2. And of course, there is a plenty of integration with the video lectures. So that it makes your questions even more sensible and easy. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Let's take this particular question for example. Here is a mother aged 35 years and has two children aged 5 and 6 years presented to OPD with complaints of amenorrhea and galactoria for the past 12 months. On investigating her serum prolactin levels was increased and radiographs of her skull revealed an empty cell. That's a clue here. So which of the following is the most likely diagnosis in this female? So we have four options here. Option number A says whether it's an autoimmune condition or not. Well, I don't think you have any history that is compatible with the diagnose of any autoimmune condition over here. And second is pregnancy. I don't think you can diagnose pregnancy without uh, any scans of the abdomen or without any urine pregnancy test or probably with 12 months of amenorrhea and galactoria. I don't think you will be able to diagnose pregnancy as well. So that option is also ruled out. And uh, let us look at the fourth option, pituitary microadenoma. I don't think that's going to be the right answer because uh, if it's going to be microadenoma, your imaging should have shown some sort of abnormality. You would have seen some mass-like lesion in the pituitary area. So that is not the case here. So definitely this is not a pituitary adenoma. By default, the answer for this question is going to be empty cella syndrome. And what do you mean by empty cella? Why empty cella should present with hyperprolactinemia? To answer that question, we need to know what are the different types of empty cella. So empty cella can be of two types. The first one could be a primary empty cella and the second one is called a secondary empty cella. Secondary empty cella is something that is easy to comprehend. Usually the patients will have a clinical history that is clear okay, in telling you that there is some cause for the empty cella that are seeing in the imaging. So what are those causes? Maybe uh, there could be history of some tumor of the pituitary gland like a micro or a macro adenoma which are gone for necrosis. That's why you're not able to see the pituitary in the cella. Second, uh, it could be prior radiotherapy or prior surgery which have removed the pituitary gland or caused necrosis of the pituitary gland. And probably uh, it could be even uh, prior hemorrhage into the pituitary as well. The process which we call it as apoplexy. So that could have caused necrosis of the pituitary gland. So these are some of the uh, clinical history that is compatible with secondary empty cell. So what is primary empty cell? You don't have a history that is compatible uh, enough to produce an empty cell in the imaging. So that is what we call as primary empty cell. So whether this term is applicable in reality or not is a big controversy. But nevertheless, uh, if you have a primary idiopathic, no clinical history, no background, still you have an empty cell in the imaging. So this is what we call it as empty cell syndrome. Empty cell syndrome. So under the empty cell syndrome, you can further subdivide into patients who are truly having an empty cell. This is called as idiopathic empty cell. Or rarely patients may not have any clinical history, but they might have had some undiagnosed clinical conditions. Like, for example, patient would have had a Sheehan syndrome in the past. We don't know. For example, take this particular lady, for example. She had two children in the past and one of those uh, childbirths could be, uh, you know, like complicated by postpartum hemorrhage that would cause a pituitary necrosis and Sheehan syndrome. We don't have any idea about that. It could be an undiagnosed condition like that of Sheehan syndrome or probably it could be some undiagnosed conditions like lymphocytic hypophysitis or there could be some undiagnosed conditions like idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So previously we used to call this disorder as benign intracranial hypertension or pseudotumor cerebri. Currently we call it as idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Currently this is the most important from radiological perspective because whenever the radiologist sees an empty cell and uh, he doesn't have any compatible clinical history, he tends to give a possibility of idiopathic intracranial hypertension if the patient's presentation is probably headache plus or minus visual field defects. So this is a very, very important point to understand. And uh, I mean, we don't really know. So whether this idiopathic, a truly idiopathic empty cell will not have any problem or not. More often than not, they will have a normal endocrine function, which means the pituitary rim will be there. Only the cella will be filled by CSF.
but the pituitary rim in the floor will still be intact and they will be producing normal endocrine function only but there are varying reports okay it's not consistent with across studies but there are varying reports to suggest that there could be hypopituitarism in certain individuals uh, and some studies say it can be even up to 20% if you don't have any cause at all almost one in five patients can have underlying hypopituitarism like for example a patient can have a growth hormone deficiency and second one patients tend to have hyper prolactinemia as well so whenever you don't see a mast lesion you don't have any other cause just an empty cell and you have a high prolactin you can attribute that high prolactin to your empty cell so that's what is happening here here the patient is having amenorrhea and galactorrhea and you are seeing empty cell and her serum prolactin was increased as well so probably this high prolactin level must be due to empty cell syndrome it's a primary empty cell most uh, likely diagnosis in this situation and again remember that empty cell is a radiological finding that's it okay should i mean whether you call it as a syndrome or not and it's highly controversial but empty cell is just a radiological finding it's not a clinical diagnosis you need to be very clear about that it's not a clinical diagnosis it's just a radiological finding and that is why the controversy exists even now whether to really diagnose empty cell or not if you have a clinically compatible history then probably you can make a diagnosis of secondary empty cell if you don't have any clinically compatible history for the loss of the pituitary in the cell then obviously you're going to make a diagnosis of primary empty cell if it's idiopathic truly then probably you can call it as a primary empty cell syndrome as well but sometimes it could be some past undiagnosed conditions like lymphocytic hypocytes or sheehan syndrome also whether to include that under primary empty cell we don't know because we don't know so whether the patient has gone for sheehan syndrome or the patient had lymphocytic hypophysis in the past we don't have an idea unless until the patient has been diagnosed with the records in the past so that's why whether to include these conditions under empty cell or not is something we don't know but if it's undiagnosed it remains undiagnosed and anyway it will be coming under empty cell only by default if you think practically so coming to the signs so what are the signs that you're going to uh, see in mri if you have an empty cell well this is what you're going to see this is a very obvious case of an empty cell syndrome where you're going to see a a pituitary area the cell that is completely filled with csf density that is nothing but fluid there's nothing else you just, all you see is just fluid but one important sign that can tell you that it's an empty cell and it's not something else is the fact that you can see the infant tubulum over here that is reaching the bottom of the pituitary that's the floor of the pituitary so which means there could be some rim of pituitary tissue and the infant tubulum is going all the way down to reach the floor of the pituitary and remember this sign is what we refer to as something called as infant tubular sign sometimes it will help you to differentiate from cystic tumors in the pituitary area so for example if there is a cystic tumor in the pituitary area this infant tubulum will be displaced to one of the sides remember still in this example the infant tubulum is still in the midline if you see take the midline it's still in the midline so infant tubulum is not displaced at all and is reaching up to the floor of the pituitary so that tells you that it must be an empty cell and it's not a cystic tumor of the pituitary there is some cystic tumor in the cell or in the pituitary region so obviously you will be seeing this displacement of the infant tubulum rather than a midline infant tubulum so this is what we refer to as infant tubular sign which is something very important for exams as well which can tell you probably if it's a positive infant tubular sign that can tell you that it must be an empty cell rather than anything else so well how do you treat empty cell there is not uh, much that you can do about it so if it's going to be due to idiopathic intracranial hypertension probably you can treat idiopathic intracranial hypertension uh, probably with acetazolamide is one of the first line treatment options or alternatively you can go for some interventions if the patient is having refractory symptoms you can go for interventions like uh, lumbo peritoneal shunt if the patient is having refractory headache or you can even go for optic nerve fenestration if the patient is having refractory visual field defects in this situation you can go for optic nerve fenestration so and there are some case reports which say that if you treat idiopathic intracranial hypertension adequately then probably Uh, your empty cell lock can spontaneously regress and pituitary might appear back again but nevertheless if you want to know what is the pathology behind idiopathic primary empty cell lock syndrome we don't really know but it's believed that there is a congenital defect in the diaphragmatic cell lock so because of that 
the subarachnoid space expands and the CSF fills that area and the pituitary becomes flattened and sometimes it's not visible. So it could be a partial empty cell where only part of the pituitary is visible or it could be complete empty cell as well. So where no part of the pituitary is visible. If it's a partial empty cell, be careful in looking for the mass. Sometimes if you see a mass in the small amount of pituitary that is visible in the cell, that can go towards a secondary empty cell rather than a primary empty cell. So that is very important as well. These are some of uh, the practical aspects with regards to empty cell. And that completes our question as well. So this question's answer is going to be empty cell syndrome. And what are the highlights of this question with regards to our speciality about the preplatinate tesis Q-Bank 2.0? First of all, you get something called as active guidance, exactly like what is mentioned in this question. So like, for example, if you see in this question, the most important points are highlighted and those are going to get, when you read a question, you can just skim through the questions. You just see what's important and what's not. And this helps you save time. And this helps you get trained on how to answer questions in the exam. And this also helps you increase your accuracy. So it's one of the major specialities of the QBank 2.2. And of course, there is a plenty of integration with the video lectures. So that it makes your questions even more sensible and easy. And you have a lot of clinical and image based questions. And it does cover the exam oriented topics from standard textbooks and easy to recall crisp and concise explanations for all the questions and questions are based on the latest exam pattern for the metases. And one more important point is the fact that uh, it has a good integration with the treasures section. So you can just click on the button and you can straight away move to the associated treasure. So treasures are really treasures and you're going to love it. And trip ladder neat SS Cubank 2.0 is all you need to ace your neat SS exam. Mm -hmm.